Hey, hello everybody, and welcome to Prop Live, your weekly prop and costume making Q&A session. I'm Bill, and today we have a guest. I'm ex really excited to have this guest on, because believe it or not, she has been making costume YouTube videos for longer than I have. <laughs> Somehow, but not as consistent as you, and nope. that is the key. <laughs> not as consistent. However... Recently, I've been much better. You absolutely like have. <laughs> We have Grace here, a.k.a. Zombie. That's me. Hey, everybody. And Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, uh, yeah. If you are not aware... By the way, everyone, everyone just pause for a moment, all right? Go look up Zon, Zon, Zombie on YouTube. <laughs> and subscribe. If you hear the sound of my voice and you are not going over there and subscribing to Zon, Zon, Zombie, then you are doing yourself a disservice. And then, and then, do yourself another favor and go back to the very first video. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> yes. Now was the your you were doing it was a Halo costume, right? Yeah, I started posting costume videos on YouTube in 2010, and I just decided it would be fun to post kind of like a video of all of my. Um, Halo armor pieces mm -hmm. that I made. I made some Mark IV armor, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to make a YouTube, and I'm going to put this on there, because I'm sure that someone out there would like it or find it helpful. And uh, then I just kind of left it alone for a while, and I came back, and like people had watched it and commented <laughs> on it. And I was like, oh, people do like this stuff. So uh, I started... Crazy? To make little tutorials here and there and kind of like work in progresses of what I've been working on. And then I had to finish school and then a police academy and I was kind of out of the YouTube uh, circuit for a good two years. And now I'm back and I've been making videos consistently for the past year and want to do so forever and ever and ever. And Bill's definitely one of my big inspirations because his videos are amazing Yay. and his work is amazing. Yay! Well, thank you so much. Um, that to so the costume in their first video, which everyone can see right now. I'm, I'm playing on, <laughs> on my video. Is that is that your first costume, or how how far into your cosplay career, so to speak, was that? So I was 17 <laughs> oh, when geez. I made that. Wow. Yeah. So. Um, I that was like one of my first fiberglass and bondo projects that I ever made and how I did it was uh, I printed off like a pepakura pattern I hot glued it all together and then covered it with resin and bondo and sanded it and it was terrible and hot and <laughs> resin and fiberglass is terrible but it was a really good learning experience that's so. great. No, you jumped in right into the deep end going with the uh, the highly <laughs> technical stuff there. That's fantastic. See, I wish I had done video of some of the earlier costumes I made. Um, I did, uh, uh, what was the first one? My my um, uh, Team Fortress. I made this rocket launcher, and I think I used similar. A lot of Bondo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I barely took any photos even. I wish I had done video of it. It's too bad. But uh, yeah, you it, did. It's, it's kind of fun to like go back and see how bad that was, yeah. and then be like, oh, "I have been improving." So it's both kind of the, like the job. Yeah, both the costume and the video work. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, it looked like it was shot on a potato. Right. I like. It, it, I think it's like four by three aspect ratio and everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh dear! Fantastic. So anyway, once again, everyone, go look up Zon Zon Zombie over. Well, obviously, we'll have a link in the show notes. Go give her a subscribe. Uh, you've been doing a lot of, like you said, a lot more lately. Yes. For yeah. example, you did um, your Raven. Is it Raven? Yeah, I, yeah Raven from Teen Titans and T sixty Power Armor from Fallout. Yeah. And I've been trying to make like a costume every month. Because um, it's been helping me learn, mm -hmm. and I've just had more time to make costumes. So that why is, why not? That is awfully ambitious. Yes, um, maybe too ambitious. <laughs> <laughs> As I am covered in paint like that's the night right. before a con, and I'm like, ah, <laughs> that's <laughs> but bonkers. <it's> <laughs> I did. Um, so I'm excited. I'm glad you're doing. Uh, you have the T60 power armor now. You are you going to uh, Comic Con? 
No. Uh. Um, the the last convention that I'm going to, I think this summer is going to be RTX, which starts tomorrow. Okay. Uh, unless anything random comes off, there's a possibility I might be going to PAX West, but maybe or maybe not. But right. hopefully. Well, at some point, I gotta hang out with you because I am working on my mechanist costume. Oh my gosh, it looks so awesome! Oh, I saw that when it was like in its baby foam yeah. form, and it looks. Oh, it looks so incredible. Good so job. I, I did, uh, I started painting this today. Oh my gosh. I'm really excited. It looks so good. So, so stoked. pretty. Started making the rest of the armor yesterday, so that's coming together. Nice. Um, this was sealed with latex, and then the base paint was done with rubber cement paint. And uh, Frank Ippolito just did a really good video on that, on Tested. Uh, your Do not my pizza. I just watched your cat. Your cat. <laughs> coming all up on your pizza there. <laughs> Um, anyway, so I followed Frank's tutorial. We'll link that video in the show notes. Totally worth it. And that, oh my gosh, I have to watch that. No, I'm doing the weathering on it. So. Oh, so nice. Weathering, oh, it's my favorite part. It's so much fun. Yeah. And we have, I have eye pucks for it. I vacuum for them the other day. We had some failures. That was a fun video. Lots, oh, no. Actually, lots of failures, but it made for a fun live stream. <laughs> and then, uh... Uh, we came up with a pretty good solution. I vacuum formed some um, some uh, bleh, polycarbonate lenses, and then I backed them up with some laser cut um, discs and a smoked acrylic. Gosh, and it's gonna it looks look cool. so seamless and good. Like I would never think that that's foam. Oh, scary! So I'm stoked. Brittany's working on her assaultron. I'm going to be cranking this thing out, and then we're going to go to Comic Con. Oh my gosh, you get to go to Comic-Con. So uh, awesome. It's Brittany's first one, too, so it's going to be exciting. Brittany's going to have lots of fun. Um, it's crooked, but it's fun. And it's yeah, fun. yes. So you did um, the other thing that I want to talk about. Um, you did this cool superhero uh, children's hospital thing. Yeah. Which, there so... is a video. Again, you guys go, <laughs> go, go through our videos and check it out. But you want to tell us a little bit about that? Because I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, so my police department is super awesome and geeky and knew that I like to make costumes and dress up as superheroes and go to cons. So um, one of the officers reached out to me and was like, hey, do you want to make a costume for this really cool thing? We get a bunch of SWAT guys, we dress them up as superheroes, and they rappel off the top of Dell Children's Hospital here in Austin, Texas, and like wave to all the kids on the way down, and then after they do that... There's like a, a skit where they catch the bad guys and like give all the kids like toys and like ice cream and all that fun stuff. And then we get to go and like play with kids all day. So it pretty much sounded perfect. Yeah. So I was like, yes, please. Thank you for asking me. So I dressed up as uh, Raven from Teen Titans. I finished it in about a week or so for the event. And the kids loved it so much, and they made me so happy. And it was also really cool to see, like, all these, like, you know, big burly SWAT dudes who are like, I'm, I'm not a nerd. And then they, like, dress up as Superman, and they, like, turn into the character. And they are suddenly, like, are more curious about the character because they want to be, like, more authentic for the kids. So they, like, would go home and do their research, like, before, and they'd be like, <laughs> okay. So it was so much fun. You got to repel down the window, it looks like? Yeah, so Dell Children's Hospital is about four stories high, and so they started us up on the roof, and we just kind of got tied up and repelled down the side all the way to the bottom where, like, the bad guys were, and then we caught the bad guys. So it was, yeah, it was really cool. I wish there were more events like that because so many people love cosplay, and it's even more rewarding when you get to do it for a good cause and make it like a bunch of kids happy all at the same time so it's the best that's great um cool i i that's something i would explore it's something i want to try and do i like i like that idea um i know a lot of other friends who do similar stuff going to children's hospitals and they're awesome like and it's great too because like their costumes are really legit yeah (laughs) right crazy legit um That's and so, like, those kids, like, you are oh, that yeah. character, yeah. and you have to know your stuff. <laughs> it's just like, you have to know what planet you're from, what your powers are, who your parents were, who do you like, who do you not like, because they know. Yeah. So, those, to ask you. Those kids are more brutal than uh, YouTube comments. 
<laughs> Sometimes, yes. <laughs> um, let's see. The other thing we have listed here, Brittany wanted to point out, you did a video on weathering your foam armor, which is something I'm doing right now. Oh. Yay! Oh my gosh, it's something I'm doing too. I It's like my favorite part. I said that already, but it's like the part that pulls everything together. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you, I use acrylics and paint like the entire piece like um like silver first is my base coat mm -hmm. like silver spray paint and then go over the entire thing in a black acrylic and then kind of sponge it or scrape some of it off in places and it kind of just gives you this weird weathered look which i really like yeah what's so. that uh, piece there you're working on what's that from uh, this is from Dark Souls 3. I'm making an Abyss Watcher costume for RTX, which is tomorrow, but I'm almost done, so <laughs> okay. it's okay. But it's going to fit on just like this, and it kind of curls around the back, and there's this really cool cloak. And there are some other <sighs> armor pieces. Like this goes also just on the arm, like uh, upside down oh, on no. the arm right here. <laughs> And uh, weirdly enough, there's only one armored hand, and like the other one's just like a normal glove. Mm -hmm. So there's my little hand. <laughs> yeah, but this ended up being a lot more difficult than I thought it was going to be. I was like, all that's sewed. It'll be fine. It won't <laughs> take me long. And then I'm like, oh no. <laughs> so, that's, you that's just described, <laughs> yeah, you just described every project I've ever done. You look it over and you're like, I've done this before. I'm pretty sure it'll be fine. I got enough time. Then halfway through the project, you're like, I've made, I've made an error. <laughs> this is not going well. Big mistake. But I'm too deep now. I have to finish oh, it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're yeah. committed. That's awesome. All right, everyone. If I haven't, we haven't given you enough reason to go subscribe to, to our channel, then, then what the heck? Go over there right now. Subscribe. See you guys over there. Ask yes. lots of questions. Yes, definitely. Um. All right. We got some questions coming in. If you guys are watching live and you have a Q&A question, technique, prop, costume making, anything like that, head on over to punishedprops.com slash live. There's a form right there where you can submit your questions. It'll get zipped over to us. We'll check it out. Uh, so please do that. We got uh, There are not a ton today. If you're definitely looking to get one uh, answered, then today's the day to do it because it will... Uh, it'll happen. I'm sure of it. Brittany's keeping an eye on those, so they'll come in here. <laughs> uh, before we jump into those questions, I have a couple of things that I want to talk about <laughs> that I'm working on yes. with you guys, with the folks that are watching at home. A uh, couple of big things that are coming up. One, um, about Patreon. And thank you, everyone who supports our YouTube channel via Patreon. You guys are amazing. We just hit a goal. I, I had a new goal to hit Prop 3D, which is our 3D printing series. The goal, uh, you guys came out in droves and supported it. We hit that goal. That means we are launching Prop 3D very soon, and I know what I'm going to make. Nice! I, I got to pick because I'm in charge. <laughs> but it's ambitious. It's from Destiny. You guys are really, really going to like it. Um, we'll be doing... Those videos will be on Fridays. Um and we're going to do, I guess I'll just say it, we're going to make the Vex Mythoclast. Holy crap. Yeah. I have wanted to challenge myself. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, let's look up a picture. Let's, so for those of you guys that don't know, it's this big honking thing right here. And I'm going to 3D model and 3D oh, print, God. assemble, and put together all these things. And you guys get to watch my struggle. <laughs> oh no yeah so that's coming <laughs> up it's gonna be fun we're picking like it's probably probably gonna be about 10 episodes uh with some other stuff in between with some guests lots of other good things so that's the first thing <laughs> the second thing uh also with uh, with patreon we're gonna do another project this summer it's gonna be the patron project and all of our patrons voted on it um and i'm gonna say too only not even half of our patrons have voted yet so if you go to patreon.com slash punish props, not only can you support us, not only can you vote on it, but there's a chance you could sway the vote. Now there's a clear front runner right now as far as the projects that we're going to do. Something from Fallout, <laughs> which I'm okay with. But if you want your vote heard, head on over there. If you're already a patron, you can go vote right now. And if you're not, you can become one and you can vote. 
Let me actually, I'll show the results right now. We um, Bash the Stampede's gun is in second, I think, Ooh, along cool. with along with Clank. But the Fallout 4 Tesla gun is a clear front runner right now. Oh my gosh, it's <laughs> gonna be so awesome! Oh man. So head on over there and cast your vote. We'll close those up here pretty soon. I'm not ready to start the project yet, so we might as well leave that vote going in case anyone, if uh, if 20 people come in and vote, they could swing they could swing it. Uh, and then one more one more thing. We got all kinds of things. I'm going to have to put together a video to cover all this stuff. <laughs> um, the YouTube channel, it's I can't even fathom this, but our YouTube channel is just about to hit 100,000 subscribers. <gasps> oh, my gosh. Congratulations. Which is crazy. It's Yay. bonkers. I just oh I did the numbers. In the first year of doing my YouTube channel, let me see. I, I ran the numbers. In the first year, I can't remember. Here it is. In 2012, we had 195 subscribers <laughs> in the in the year in the whole year. <laughs> That's awesome. But that was just under 200 in a year. In this last year, we've gotten another 45,000, which is <gasps> bonkers. Oh my gosh! So this is what we're doing. Here's the That's so much our hundred thousand. Everyone does videos for their their milestones. So the hundred thousand video is going to be. I'm going to build a, a prop. I'm going to give out the blueprints for free. Something from Firefly. <laughs> it's going to be cool. And then people who watch are going to watch my video, take the blueprints, build their own, send me a video of theirs, and then I'll make a compilation video of all the video, all the prop guns that people make. Oh, that is so cool. Yes. So, That's such a good idea. Bunch of ambitious stuff coming up on the yeah. old YouTube channel over here. And I'm excited to do it with you. I'm excited because so much of it is interactive with you guys. Boom. All right. You ready for some questions? Let's do it. Some hard hitting Q&A. The first one, Brittany, uh, since she's in charge of the doc, she just snuck her question in there right at the top. <laughs> <laughs> she wants to know what your kitty's name is. Oh, that's Neeners. Neeners? She's, yeah. Her name was Nyanko, but it's kind of devolved over the years as all animal names do. Yeah. So she's very fat and happy, and I have my acrylic paint sitting right here, and uh, she, about five minutes before we started, jumped right into the black and then <laughs> ran through the apartment. So I was, like, chasing her and trying to, like, wipe off her paw, and that kind of stuff happens less often now because I'm usually in my shop, but today it's, like, 400 degrees outside. Yeah, yeah. So. <sighs> well, there you go. There you go, Britt. It's Neeners. Uh, let's see. it In the chat, King Cat is pointing out that I will get a YouTube play button. That is correct. But nice. here, here's my plan, though. It's a silver, like, chrome play button. I'm going to make one out of foam and, and swap it out. Because I feel oh, like... Oh, that's awesome. I feel like that would be appropriate. Yes. <laughs> I make a fun video, too. <laughs> to 100,000 is the foam play button. <laughs> Um, all right, next question. Nick is Steve. This is a very serious question. How do I become as awesome as you? Ah, <laughs> uh, what's the what's the it secret? Just, it just kind of happens. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's I, a very nice question. I will point. Work hard and do what you love all the time. That's a good one. You'll get put it. there. <laughs> I will say though, um, the advice I give to people when they when there's a when they see stuff in the world that, that they appreciate and that they want to emulate is that um, be the thing that you want out of the world. So if you want the world to be more giving, then you be more giving. If you want the world or people to be more helpful, then you be more helpful. So or, or like in your case, doing things like helping out with charities, like that's the sort of stuff that like builds your character in a very specific way by contributing your time and you know like there are very few people i imagine who do that sort of thing who end up being a jerk right <laughs> <laughs> exactly that's the best answer yeah for how to be awesome for sure it's like uh, i think john cena has the record for the most um what is it the 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 make a wish foundation he's done like five over 500 of those things oh my gosh that's so cool yeah there's no way he's like a turd right yeah <laughs> You impossible don't, you don't do that 500 <laughs> times go home and be like just mouth off to people 
I bet that guy <laughs> sleeps like a baby. Probably he works out all the time too. But he just sleeps, cuddles himself up at night, and just like I did good today. <laughs> there you go. There you go, Nick. Good answer. <laughs> yeah. All right. One of our regulars, our buddy Kyle over at Fearless Facade, wants to know about your T60 power armor. <gasps> a. Ow! I just hit myself on accident. <laughs> he says, he says, <laughs> a. It's awesome. I agree. And he would like to know how many hours you think you may have put into that build, and if it's all foam. It hmm. is all foam. Um, thank you for thinking that it's awesome. I worked really hard on it. Uh, I spent about two and a half weeks in between work and other adultly obligations making it for PAX East. Uh, hours? It's always such a difficult question yeah. to answer, because I'm like, I never, like, you know... I'm looking at the time or anything, but I can say like the, it took two and a half weeks to make. <laughs> um, I wish I was better at keeping track of my hours. Cause I do get that question all the time. Um, but man, it was fun to make and it was stressful there at the end. Cause I didn't think I was going to get it done. And I was trying to be like the good cosplayer. It's like, you know what? If I don't get it done, that's okay. I have other costumes that I can wear, but inside I was like raging and like, I have to do it. So, <laughs> and I was like telling YouTube, like, I am not going to compromise sleep to get this done. And then by the end, like all of that was out the window. And yeah. I was like, ah! <laughs> I did something similar uh, a couple of years ago for, for San Diego Comic-Con. I'm like, I'm making Iron Man armor. This is happening. And I was documenting it all. And I gave myself like a week and a half, which was oh my ridiculous. Gosh. It was insane. So the videos go from like, hey, here's what I did today. Looking good. This is pretty good. Ah, oh, I made some good progress today. Oh, boy. There's a lot more of this than I thought. I don't know if I could do this, you guys. And then the last video was me just like, this was a mistake. This was really stupid. I'm going to make an <laughs> arm and a leg and bring just that, <laughs> which I did. <laughs> Sweet. But it was kind of, that was, I'm fun. Um, it was fun to document that, just see how the evolution of my spirit degrading. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I see that with some of my videos too. It's just like, oh man, that's kind of like a fun part of it too. It's to watch other people make costumes and I mean... Not that only that they're, like, so amazing at it, but they can get it done in, like, such a short amount of time. Yeah. And, yeah, they get frustrated during the end, but, like, it still looks so good. And it's inspiring. Huh? <laughs> so, yeah, you bring that arm and a leg, dang it. That's you should be right proud I did. of it. I was. Yeah. <laughs> it was way more comfortable, too. <laughs> exactly. Well, that, that, uh, that question came to us from our buddy Kyle. He's got a uh, T60 mask. He already has the helmet done. Nice. Actually, you you don't have a helmet, so you guys can trade. <laughs> yes, tradesies. <laughs> That'd be perfect. Yeah, I get a little too grouchy, like carrying around or wearing a helmet all day. So I was like, I'm not gonna do it. Yeah. But maybe someday I'll go back to it and make one. So uh, there you go. Good luck on that build, Kyle. It's gonna be that's gonna be a bear, but you can do it, buddy. You got this. Believe in you. All right, another regular here, Venger, says, uh, do you ever have one of those days where you can't string two com uh, competent actions together? Nothing seems to be going the way you want. How do you get through this? Does your occupation as a self-employed businessman compel you to work through your off days, or do you... What's an off day? I don't know what that is. <laughs> how about how about you, Grace? Do you ever have days where you just it just feels like your skill has, has, has vacated your body and you just can't get things to go to? Together. Yes, yes. Yesterday, I spent like two hours trying to finagle my airbrush to work correctly because I was using acrylics. And I, four times, it got all clogged and back up and paint shot through the little dispenser and onto my blinds in my <laughs> shop. And I was just like, this is, I can't, I can't believe this. So, I, taking like little 15 to 20 minute breaks really does help just mm -hmm. not leaning over work and kind of like sitting back on the couch or watching a YouTube video or just looking at your phone and having a cup of coffee. It helps yep. that. And if you haven't showered that day, taking a shower really <laughs> helps wake you up if you're working on something. So yeah, just take little breaks would be my advice i like that i like to no matter what always remain productive 
So I'll do things, I'll do like clean, I'll clean the shop. There's always part of the shop that could use some cleaning. Um, I had one day, a couple days ago where I didn't, or it just, I felt I was just overwhelmed, you know? Um, and one of the ways I combat that is I write everything down, everything I know I need to do, I organize it. Um, I use a program called OmniFocus to keep all of my tasks um, organized. So that I, I will never forget to do everything, but occasionally you look at that list and you're like, holy crap, that's full of way more things than I could ever accomplish in my lifetime. So I literally just stood there and I had a, a mixing squirrel for mixing resin or mixing whatever. And it was, I'd had it for years. So it had layers of like alginate and expanding foam and all sorts of stuff on it. And for like 45 minutes there, I just took a little like exacto knife and just picked pieces off of it until it was spotless i just put on a youtube video and just picked it clean until it sounds really relaxing it was it was it was actually uh cathartic and at the (laughs) end i had a tool that was now perfectly clean and i was like oh i accomplished something may not have helped me it wasn't even on my list the list of all this stuff i had to do wasn't even one of those things but it was something, and I felt all right. Good. After that. yeah. That's a really good way to approach it too. Yeah. So you don't feel like you're completely at a loss, or you can't accuse yourself of yeah. being lazy for resting for 15 minutes. But yeah, it's a good idea. I think I'll do that next time. Mm-hmm. Distemper in the chat says, "Try yoga. It helps clear the mind." <laughs> That's not a bad idea. Just start doing push-ups. Just yes. go down and just start start going crazy. I can't do that in my shop because there's contact cement everywhere and it's sticky and it just makes me sad. <laughs> um, thank you, Venger. Good question. Okay, next one comes from our buddy Kevin. Kevin's here. I believe I saw him in the chat. Uh, he says, how often does your police training and cosplay work overlap? Or does that training kick in at all when you're posing in a costume? <laughs> um. I was Jill Valentine earlier this year, and I was just like, this is me! Yeah! And that was really fun to be. So, yeah, I I mean, you kind of gain an understanding of, like, how to stand or how to pose if you're in a costume that's similar to what you do in real life. And um, um, as far as training kicking in, no, not really. I do try to relax (laughs) when I'm at cons. But, I mean, there are definitely some situations where it's just like, this can't be happening. Really? Like, I was at E3, and I was, uh, it was the day before, so I was chilling outside, and it was beautiful, and I had a coffee, and it was, like, in a movie, like, this guy, like, runs out and jumps on a bike and, like, goes down this alleyway, and this chick runs out and is like, stop, thief, my purse! And I'm just like, (laughs) ah! So, like, me and, like, some other people, like, ran after this dude, and they tackled him, and, like, we waited for police to get there, and I was just like, this is so weird that this is happening right now. (laughs) But, uh, luckily, those things are few and far between, and everybody was okay. Yeah. Uh, I want to know how often it goes the other way, and you bring your power armor to work. That would oh, be cool. man. You could put I a little wish. little lights and siren on the shoulders. I wish every day. Everyone would do what I said, and no one would ever lie, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, besides like the, the superhero day thing, and this past weekend... Uh, we surprised uh, a brave kiddo who was fighting cancer. We surprised him at his birthday party, and we were all dressed up as superheroes again. Um, besides that, it doesn't really overlap that often, uh, which, I mean, is probably good. Yeah. <laughs> as cool as it would be to wear a suit of armor to work, though, that'd be awesome. Yes. <laughs> all right. Good question, Kevin. Thank you for that. Next one comes from Albert. Uh, what piece of machinery has surprised you the most in the way of ease uh, of use uh, or versus its uh, practicality? Let me see here. Or practicality versus price. Okay. So, like, what, what tool have you picked up to surprise you? You're like, oh, this is, you know, this is pretty easy. Like, do you have any any tools that, any, or are you looking to buy any new tools or anything you tried out? The biggest one that I was surprised how cheap it was and how I use it and how I've used it for like four years and it still works as great as it did when I first opened it was my heat gun. Mm-hmm. 
Like those things are so cheap and they're so amazing. Yeah. Like if you don't have one, go get one right now. So that's probably my main one. That and like a heat knife, because that's also pretty, or like a, a heat tool. Yep. It's yep. also really cheap and really great for everything. I got to say, I bought a lathe a few years ago, and it's a cheapo Harbor Freight one. It was like 130 bucks or something. And it's okay. Um, I use that. I don't use it all the time, but when I need it, boy, is it handy. And I didn't, I didn't even, like, I probably should have looked up some tutorial videos on it. But I didn't because, the, <laughs> like, the physics of it made sense to me. And I was like, oh, I just mash chisels in there and it makes a shape. So I picked up, a, like, the just the, the really the basics of um, using a lathe pretty quickly. Because it, it all kind of just makes sense. There aren't a lot that many moving parts. It's just spinning and you just mash tools into it. <laughs> That's awesome. I have so many things I want to buy. Probably the top of my list would be... First, an air conditioner for my garage, <laughs> but then uh, a belt sander because I hand sand everything right now. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but uh, yeah, definitely belt sander would be amazing. That's a good one to have right there. The belt sander disc sander combos are pretty, pretty nice. Um, all right. Thank you, Albert. Good question. Here's one of our other buddies. Uh, Corey M9 says... While waiting around, I happened to have one of those survival paracord bracelets. I looked up how they're made and then proceeded to tie and untie it repeatedly for most of the, most of the day. And now I have a new skill. What do you guys do to kill time? Presumably not when you're not in the shop or near a computer. Uh, he's kind of looking for other things to do because he might he be where he is for multiple days. How do you kill time? Oh, no. I mean, I wish that it wasn't an age where like it's so easy just to kill time by picking up your phone mm -hmm. and like looking through every possible thing on the internet and i feel like i would have more cool skills if i didn't have a smartphone yeah but oh, man i wish i had like some fun activities for you if you're gonna be stuck in the same place for days that sucks i uh, let's <laughs> see if Let's see if I can do this. Oh, I juggle. And I'm not, <gasps> I'm not like, I don't juggle, like, I can juggle three things. And I have them right here. So if I'm, Whoa. like, in line, and Brit my wife Brittany knows this, so she, <laughs> like, here's a good example. We were at the uh, beer store the other day, and we, she, Brittany was buying limes. And she got two limes, because she knows if she got three limes, then I would juggle them. And then I would drop them, and I would make a scene. <laughs> So that's what I do when I'm in line. If there's anything in the <laughs> checkout stand that I could juggle, I, I do my juggle. So here we go. I'll oops, let's see if I can do this without dropping my. Oh, let's move my thing. Okay, so this, juggle. this is what I learned when I was uh, when I had a job at a golf course. I, I juggle golf. <laughs> this looks like it's been chewed on by cats. How about that? All right, let's see here. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, nice. Ta-da! It's and, going. Wow. And, to to uh just to spite Brittany when she handed me two limes, I was like, I can do this. I can juggle two things with one hand. <laughs> wow. So that's how that's I kill time. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the best skill actually. I wish I could juggle. I should teach myself. It's well the when I was fifteen, my first job was at a golf course and I was the you know the golf cart with the cage on it and the driving range you try and hit? Mm -hmm. That was me. Aww. And there's nothing quite so frightening as getting hit at about 250 yards by a golf ball. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> um, but I had plenty of downtime at that job, too. So I just, and there were golf balls everywhere. So I just learned by practicing with golf balls. And you said the most you can do is three? Yeah. Four is interesting. Because three, <laughs> the balls go from one hand to the other. Four is juggling two balls in each hand. But the two stay in this hand, and two they don't intermingle. Oh, it's a weird. weird thing. Yeah, I didn't know that. And I uh, every attempt, I if I had another job with a lot of spare time, I might figure it out. But I'm happy with three. <laughs> right now, three is, three is pretty good. <laughs> good, good question, Corium Nine. Have fun learning a new skill. Learn to juggle. Learn to juggle. Get back to us. Learn to juggle bracelets. Yes. <laughs> 
Okay, let's see here. Uh, Dagger Elk, another one of our regulars, says, Would I be able to use Rebound 25 to make a one-part block mold? Uh, yes. Yes, you can. Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> um, so they make silicones for every occasion. Um, uh, rebound is usually for brush-on molds, but it works just fine as a as a pouring mold as a you do two part molds i have plenty of molds that um are made of rebound just because that's what i had so i just used it so there you go <laughs> that was easy i like those questions good easy question kurgle fa or fanime cosplay or famine cosplay there we go how the heck do you store all your giant foam costumes? I'm considering buying a or building a PVC frame to store my work in progress costumes, but I need a good idea or two to keep my others safe and looking fresh. What do you do? Where's your uh, power armor right now? Uh, I have a 65 gallon tub mm -hmm. um, that I keep it in, and it I kind of have to squish it in there. Yeah. And that is just kind of being used as a secondary table right now, <laughs> just because it is so huge. Uh, for my other ones, I just get the smaller, like, uh, hard cases for them that have, like, the latches and, like, TSA locks in case they need to travel anywhere. And I kind of just have those stacked up in the corner of my garage. But even with those, it's still kind of hard because it's so humid here. And sometimes when I... Cat wants Take them pizza. out. They're like they're like all sticking together, or you know they've bent in some weird shape. So I'm always up to learn new ways how to store armor because it's not easy. Yeah, making it is the fun part, and then you have to worry about all the other stuff after. Yep. I definitely want to get some mannequins, um, especially because my our Draugr costumes. I don't want to wear those things anymore. Uh, they're getting old and gross. But I would love to like put them on a mannequin and like pose them by the door all creepy like yeah <laughs> if anyone ever broke into your house they'd be like yeah. oh no so they'd leave immediately <laughs> down there everyone can see there's lord Shax. he's in that bin and then it's like draugr mass effect like you just go down the list uh, one of those is diablo we just have these crates that we keep them in it's not we can travel with those ones, which is really handy. Those ones are foot lockers. Um, Conoco makes them. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, they're just the right size that um, airlines will let them in. They won't be oversized. Oh, yeah, I need to get those. Yeah. It was flying with my power armor was obscene. It Traveling with it was more expensive than yep. it was to make it. Yeah, and they even like felt sorry for me and like didn't charge me like what they should have, oh, wow. but it was still insane. So with that one, if um, if I had to bring two of those things, what it would be like twenty five bucks for the first one, then probably fifty for the next one. So it would have been like seventy five bucks each way. Um, I try and keep it to one of those. So my Mass Effect armor can fit in one of those. Shax can fit in one of those. The Draugr can fit Great. in one of those. Um, and then usually what that means is if I have a helmet, I just carry that on the plane with me. Oh, <laughs> cool. I do that all the time. <laughs> so much fun. I don't think I've ever carried a prop with me you on can, the plane. So you get, um, you get a, uh, what was it? Your checked luggage, whatever that costs you. Usually it's like mm -hmm. 25 bucks for the first one and then a million after that. Um, and then on the plane, you get like, one carry on and then one um personal item personal item so yeah. my helmets are usually my personal item yeah. i have another like roller bag with with whatever i can jam in that <laughs> that doesn't look like a gun because even toy <laughs> you can't bring toy you can check your toy guns but don't bring them on the plane in your carry on yeah don't and then my this will be my my carry on or my personal item and this will just sit on my lap while i fly and no one's ever bugged me about it so that's good. Yeah. Or if you had to bring like two props, you could always just wear one. Like yeah. you could wear that on your head. It's, I've, <laughs> done, I've done that too. <laughs> one one time I flew with a I just was wearing a pirate hat on the plane. I was like, <laughs> just wearing a pirate nice. hat. Nice. Um, there you go. Famine cosplay. That's that's the long and short of it right there. Let's grab another one here. This comes from Mark D. Any tip 
for making things not melt in hot climates. He lives in Arizona, and it was 115 degrees, and all oh the, all gosh. the glue melted. Now you're in oh, no. Texas. Yeah, yeah, I'm in Austin, Texas. Yeah. Not only is it hot, it's so humid, Ugh. and I mean, it's rough. Contact cement solves a lot of that problem mm-hmm. once it's set. Yeah. But uh, I was running into problems just from this build of my foam was hot, my contact cement was hot, it was hot in my garage, and it was humid, and it had been raining for the past two days. So that means stuff is just not going to stick. Um, what I ended up doing is like bringing my stuff inside, letting it cool, going outside and applying like the, the contact cement, and then reapplying it like inside just so it has a cool place to to set but um i haven't run into too many problems with things actually coming apart due to heat um just because i'm such a nazi about like reinforcing stuff like i'll do like contact cement and then super glue over that and if i think it's a problem area then i'll also do like uh hot glue and put another piece of foam over it so it's like an adhesive sandwich Mm -hmm. and i usually don't run into any problems that way but i know it's hot in arizona like i'm sure things melt all the time out there (laughs) so that's rough yeah i see um distemper in the chat lives in arizona and he uses super glue the super glue won't melt Um, which is totally fine uh my mass effect armor is all done with super glue if I had known about contact cement then, I probably would have used that. Um, but super glue works. Uh, you can also get higher... There's t- more than one kind of uh, hot glue. And there are higher melt hot glues. Yeah, you, like you, the high temp ones. Yeah, you need a high temp hot glue gun. And then make sure you get the high temp um, melt glue. Mm-hmm. But that'll help out as well. Um, so there you go. And, don't, and try not to leave your... Whatever it is, no matter how good or how well you put it together, don't leave it in the yeah. back seat of a car. <laughs> yeah, that's like a death sentence. Yep. <laughs> yeah. It's probably better if you put it in the trunk. I can't I don't know if that gets hotter or not, but like if it's in the back window of your car in Arizona, yeah. it's 115 degrees out. It's like an oven. Yeah, it's like 150 in the car and then just a puddle of costume left over. <laughs> no. There you go. There you go, Mark D. Some tips for you. I also recommend not living in Arizona if that's an op- <laughs> if that's an option. <laughs> Dang! Shots fired. <laughs> All right, Distemper has a question for us. Uh, I like to make things out of monster clay. Add my own details, such as Thor's hammer. How would I go about molding and casting something made out of clay? Your video show you putting clay around half the object and pouring the silicone on the other half. I'm afraid. Uh, if I tried it this way, I would ruin my hammer by ending up with just a big lump of clay when it all melts, melds together. How about I go about creating some sort of base around the bottom half? That is a very good question. Um, I would, what you can do is, um, make your monster clay master, clay it up using a wet clay, so, or wed clay, um, so it's water-based clay. Pour the first half, flip it over, remove the wet clay. You'd be surprised at how well it comes off of your uh, monster clay. And then you can carefully wipe down the seam where there's any clay left over, uh, any wet clay. You can just wipe it down with a wet cloth. It should come right off. And if you're very gentle, then your monster clay master should be just fine. Um, so, yeah. But I wouldn't use nice. monster clay on monster clay for making your your parting line so there you go (laughs) sweet molding tips by bill (laughs) the best tips you have you dipped your toe into the molding and casting world no i haven't i've gotten smooth cast before and Mm -hmm. have kind of used it to like uh coat over other Ah. things just to give it like that super nice polished finish um and then like sanded it and all that stuff but I would love to learn how to do that. It's, I mean, there's a bunch of tutorials out there. I've watched yours and other people's, and I'm just like, yeah, yeah, I could do that. But Mm -hmm. I can't think of, like, anything specifically that I was like, this absolutely needs to be cast. And um, I really just need to, this winter when it's con season is over, I just need to 
get all the stuff and just start making little things and then yeah. work small, up. It's best to start small. Smart with start with small pieces and small molds. One part molds if you can to get started. Um, or you can even just take your clay, like the monster clay that Distemper was talking about, and just make simple push molds. Where you take a piece, you just press it into the clay, and then pull it out, and then pour your smooth cast in there. That's cool. A, that's the easiest and cheapest way to get started there. Very nice. Uh, good question, Distemper. Let's keep moving on here. We've got about 10, 15 minutes left here. Um, Promethea says, I'm going as Big Barda for Baltimore Comic Con, and I was looking for fabric that looks like her scale mail. I found mermaid scale leggings, but they're not my size. Any suggestions for painting techniques to create a scale mail effect on fabric? That's a good question. <laughs> Any ideas? Yeah, um, I'm I'm a big painter on fabric person. Mm-hmm. Um, I was just doing it for this costume. It's got like a really weird pattern on the bottom half of it. But um, get some different fabrics from the store and see how they react with fabric paints. I usually use acrylics. Um, everybody has their favorite, but um, acrylics work really well. And I've used it on, like, stretch vinyl, and it's okay. Um, You can airbrush it on if it's got, like, a really soft kind of, like, scale effect. I'm not familiar with the character. Mm -hmm. Or you can go in with, like, um, a little paintbrush and, you know, dip your paint, dilute it if you need to, and kind of paint on every individual scale if you want to go that hardcore with it. Um, I've seen other people get, like, big sheets of paper and you know cut out with an exacto blade like the pattern that they want and then kind of sponge over that to kind of get your effect on your fabric and i've seen like people do so many different things but uh i'm a big fan of just acrylic and or fabric paint and water and paint brushes that usually works for me those are all really good tips I would do. I would probably go with a stencil. That's how I would do it. Yeah, stencil. Yeah. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and and just some acrylic paints. That should work just fine. Um, there you go, Promethea. Good luck with your your leggings. Uh, Corlock Striker wants to know: Did you ever finish the Iron Man armor that you mentioned? Nope. <laughs> oh man, that should be like. When did what year did you make it? Oh, this was three or four years ago. Um, I gave what I had done. I gave it to my brother, and oh, he okay. and he finished it. So I've got a picture. I got a picture up on uh, on the thing there. He he did the finishing work on it. It was okay. Um, it was kind of slapdash. Um, he did his best that he the best he could with it. Um, but he then in turn went and made a full on Pepecura fiberglass crazy one. Oh my gosh. That was so much better that I oh, was like cool. I just won't ever be Iron Man. That's fine. Oh no. <laughs> I was about to say like for your five year anniversary or like I don't know, way down the road you could be like, Remember that time when I did that? Well I'm gonna do it for real <laughs> and then just make like an amazing set of armor. My but you would need a mannequin for that because yeah. then you have to like display it. My desire to make an Iron Man suit uh, varies depending on how long it's been since I've watched an Iron Man movie. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, they come out pretty often. They sure do. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next question comes from Deep Sea Nemo. I'm starting my first cosplay work. And I'm trying to get uh, to keep good track of progress I'm using social media to post my work. Do you have any advice about what to do to start putting my work out for the rest of the world to see? How did you first go about streaming and YouTubing your cosplay work? How would you do that? Would you? I would do what Grace did and shoot a super awesome video <laughs> put it up on YouTube. <laughs> super great. No, I mean, just you're you're already doing the right thing by posting it on social media. Mm-hmm. Like you're already doing a great job, and it doesn't have to be you know beautiful camera work, and you don't need like an eight hundred dollar camera, and you don't need like a set or mm-hmm. like a fancy shop. Just work with what you have and. People out there will appreciate what you're doing, and you should appreciate it for yourself, too, because you're having fun, and you're getting to document 
what you're doing and it's going to be so fun for you to look back on that in the future and be like wow look how far I've come or I've really improved and it's it's a nice thing to have and you know the longer you're doing it and the more consistent you are um, the the bigger crowd that you're going to draw and people are I mean, people love to watch other people make stuff. Yes. It's what I found. And they love learning from other people. And I know that's what I like to do. So just keep doing what you're doing. I know Bill has some great <laughs> tips on doing that for sure. I think uh, the con- con- being consistent, what you said, being consistent, it really is key, especially um, – like you were saying, like with YouTube, um, if you could post one video a week, no matter what, that helps a lot. Um, but I would also highly recommend um, starting your own blog. It's not that hard. If you go, um, for example, we we have a we use DreamHost for our hosting our website. If you buy a website, they're not that expensive. You buy the name like punishedprops.com and then you buy hosting for it so that's where all your files live um a lot of all of these no matter who you go with they've got their um uh interfaces to like install a wordpress blog so with dreamhost it literally is a one-click install you're like make it a wordpress blog go and it installs everything for you and then learning how to use wordpress is super easy um the uh the cool thing about that is uh, that's a place where your stuff can live forever and it's a place that you own and it's not going to go away. Um, and in, in the case of the way we do our stuff, that's where our store lives. So it's a place where people go to learn stuff, go see all of your old archive things and a place where people can buy things. You don't have to sell stuff, but maybe you will in the future. <laughs> um, so yeah, start a blog. Start a blog. It's only a little bit more effort, but it's a little more effort than anyone else is going to do. So we might as well do it. It's good advice. Yeah. Like a, a lot. For some reason, I think a lot of people think that blogs are like, ah, oh, that was like you know, like mid two thousand Z. But like, I love reading people's blogs and being able to see like detailed pictures yeah. and descriptions of all of that is it's so satisfying. So, yeah, good idea. Uh, monk in the chat says vlogs blogs and corgi dogs <laughs> <laughs> all good things yes but think if all of them were together good. at once really good question really really great question no matter what it is though you start a blog a youtube channel whatever just post stuff consistently <laughs> uh draconic k says i need to make custom buckles for my costume however i have no metal working experience the armor itself is a combination of cinture and foam, and I figured I could make the buckles in epoxy sculpt, make a silicone master, and then cast them. These would be for the straps, uh, whatever. Let's see. Uh, polyurethane resin be strong enough? I would say if you're going to cast them in a resin, then you could make um, cut out a piece of coat hanger metal. Use that to reinforce it. So you can put the metal in your mold and then backfill around it with your resin. That'll make it strong. Um, and you can cast low melt metals like pewter in silicone, um, which I believe we have a video on. Hooray. Uh, so yeah, you could do them, them in pewter. I don't know how well the pewter would hold up to lots of abuse, but it might work. Sweet. Yes. I want to try out all that stuff so bad. It sounds like so much fun. Um, if you do cast, make sure you use, if you get, um, Mold Max 60 is a high temperature silicone. You can cast them out of like Mold Max 30, but you're only going to get a couple of pulls before the metal destroys your uh <laughs> just destroys your mold. <laughs> so just know that going into it. But you could just cast a, a resin uh buckle and reinforce it by by sinking a piece of like coat hanger metal into it. That should help out. All right, we have a couple more questions. We got 5 minutes. Let's do this. Danny wants to know, is there a super awesome place where you get all of your EVA foam? Harbor Freight and Walmart have those interlocking square four packs, but is there somewhere better, cheaper? Where do you get your foam, Grace? I I even made a video about it because yeah. I got so many questions about it. I get my foam from Five Below, um, <laughs> which is just like a, a dollar store, only it's like a $5 store. And they have like a yoga sports section 
And I wish I had like a roll of it with me, but it's just like this roll, it's about this big, um, totally flat on one side so you don't have to sand it or anything. Um, and it's five bucks and it's like a kid's yoga mat, but I love to use it for cosplay. And like a lot of other cosplayers go there and just like buy the store out for foam. <laughs> um, but if I'm looking for like a higher quality, like, you know, the interlocking mats, then yeah, Harbor Freight is good. I usually get mine on the Amazon because I can buy them in bulk. But oh, thank you, Adam. Hey. A little, a little bearded angel heard my call <laughs> this is it's all cut up obviously but this is the stuff very cool yeah i like that um we even have in the chat tnt cosplay supplies in there saying hello they have a if you want like just straight up foam with no texture or anything on it and big rolls that's a good place to get it oh, nice. um that's what i'm making all of this stuff out of and it's fantastic right it there. looks really great yeah ah. it's no texture or anything on the inside oh. Got that fresh. We get some of that stuff. It's got that fresh foam smell too. <laughs> um, so I'll order stuff from them if I need a whole bunch of stuff. If I'm in a hurry and I need foam like this minute, I will just go to the hardware store and buy floor mats. Mm-hmm. Um, or I'll get the thinner stuff like craft foam from Joann's or Michaels. That's what I do. Oh yeah, I I go for the the Joann's like the little crafty foam so yep, like the, yep. the seven millimeter or the eight millimeter ones. yeah the whole stack so good i usually take the i don't usually need the colors so the black and the white i just go the whole tray of it i'm like what? mine <laughs> and some kids like i need that for my school project I'm like too no, bad shorty <laughs> <laughs> all right let's grab one more jocelyn wants to know have you ever made a bodysuit for any of your armor costumes if so do you have any tips or tricks like using the restroom i have many an unfortunate video on youtube too way back when when i was making my noble six armor from uh halo reach and i made a bodysuit for that and that was the costume that i figured out that bodysuits probably aren't the best thing for armored costumes because if they're really hard to get out of when you need to pee Mm -hmm. and say if there's like an emergency where you need to get out of your bodysuit because you passed out due to heat, which also hap- happened in that costume. Oh, jeez. Yeah. So I always go for, you know, the black shirt and like black leggings or whatever. And you can make those if you're feeling hardcore. Or you can just order them and use them the exact same way as a bodysuit, only mm-hmm. it's easier to get in and out of. So I did. Um... My Mass Effect armor is one of my favorites because I got... They're actually women's yoga pants, but... Yes! They're... So comfortable, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I got those and I just I just um, stenciled a, a pattern on them. Oh, yeah. And then it's just a, a male black um, um, athletic shirt. <laughs> Excuse me. Again, I just stenciled the, the pattern on there. So that's all Perfect. my Mass Effect armor is. And I just stitched uh, Velcro wherever I needed to stick armor. Um... My Draugr costume is a Zentai suit, just off the shelf, and with a zipper down the back that I can usually get on and off myself. I added a, a string to the zipper so that I can. Yes, reach it. I had to do that too. Yeah, um, but then I just cut a hole in the crotch region so that I could use the restroom that way. Smart. And I wear I wear what I call them my uh, ancient Nord boxer briefs. So. <laughs> I just wear boxer briefs like they're green like they match they're they're like a pale like sage green uh yeah. they match the rest of the costume oh nice <laughs> I wear those over the bodysuit so I'm not showing off I wish I could get away with that butt. but yeah and no. then he's got like a loincloth <laughs> that covers everything um and then uh for my, one of my um uh what was it the, the craziest I ever went was my uh, Titan costume. And I designed a pattern. I bought a pattern online for a bodysuit. And then I drew over it in Photoshop and made the whole undersuit. And I had it custom printed. Oh, nice. Yeah, it was, it was really good. And I handed it to a friend of mine to sew. Because I'm bad at that. But she sewed it together. It had a zipper down the back. It had a zipper in the front. Very cushy for doing the, the pee-in. Nice. And uh, and then I wore it like two or three times, and then I left it in a hotel room. So it's gone. <gasps> oh, no. Oh, my 
my gosh. Oh, that is so sad. Yeah. Rocket Man props in the chat says you can buy a Zentai suit that does have a crotch zipper. So that's that's good. Good to know. <laughs> I don't feel like that works for chicks very well. No. You dudes are no. so lucky. Yeah. Um, so a lot of times now I'll, I, I'll plan my costume so that it splits at the waist. That just makes everything mm-hmm. easier. Yeah. So my uh, this guy, actually this guy, uh, the undersuit is a, like a mechanics coveralls. And it does not nice. split at the waist. So I'm going to have to figure some stuff out. Oh, no. <laughs> Peeing shouldn't be a problem. Let's just you can it figure way. it out. All right. Great. This. That was a great question, Jocelyn. And that is it. That is our last question. Yay. Thank you guys so much for bringing the awesome questions. You guys are great. Our prop tarts in the chat there. Uh, Grace, thank you so much for hanging out with us for an hour. Thanks for having me. It was so much fun. Oh, absolutely. Of course. Everyone, if you missed it earlier, go on over, find Zon Zon Zombie on YouTube. Go subscribe. You owe it to yourself to go subscribe. And then go look at her first video when you were she was working on her first costume, and it's amazing. And then you can work your way forward and literally chronicle your entire endeavor into becoming a more well-rounded human being and cosplayer. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, where should people look for you next? You're you're going to a thing this weekend? I am RTX. That's right. It is here in Austin, Texas. It's Rooster Teeth's convention that they put on. It's gaming and internet, and it's a great time. So you should definitely come if you're in the area. It's I great. agree. Fantastic. Well, there you go, everyone. Another prop live in the can. We'll do another one of these, let's say, next week around this time. Uh, thanks for hanging out. And go work on your costumes, because that's what I'll be doing. I'm doing that right now. Bye, everybody. (laughs) Yeah.